Michelangelo once said, the greatest danger for most of us is not that we aim too high and miss it, but rather that we aim too low and reach it. Lent begins when we receive our ashes this Wednesday, and Lent is a great time for us to consider what we're aiming for in life. Because everything that we do aims us either towards heaven or to hell, to excellence or to mediocrity and decay. Always, but especially during Lent, it's helpful for us to use the spiritual disciplines that grow us in discipleship and aim us toward God. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer is spending time with God in different ways and asking him for help. Fasting are those self-denials that both purify and prepare us to say no when temptations come our way. And almsgiving is the assistance that we give to a needy person or cause. Sometimes this is done with money, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe you've heard the advice or someone's told you, you know, don't give up anything for Lent this year. Just do something extra. Well, I just want to tell you off the top, that is bad advice. (laughs) That's like expecting to become physically fit just by lifting weights but not eating a good diet. To grow spiritually, you need prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Your Lenten practices, though, aren't necessarily the place where you need to aim high because your Lenten practices, rather, those are the means that help you aim high. If you've got no idea what you wanna do for Lent this year, I've got a couple ideas just for your consideration. You know, for prayer. Maybe you might consider coming to daily mass or the Stations of the Cross or praying the rosary each day or, or reading from one of the Gospels for five minutes a day. For fasting, you might give up sweets or alcohol or Netflix or eating between meals or salt or cream or sugar in your coffee. Now, these things could be a complete denial, but they could also be a moderation. And then for almsgiving, maybe you want to donate to a charity that helps others. Maybe you want to help someone who's in need directly. Or maybe you want to give up some of your time doing good for others. To help you get the most out of Lent this year, as you came in today, or at least as you leave, take one of these handouts that we have. On the back of them, it has, it says prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And I strongly encourage you to write down what you want to do. And the reason for this is quite simple. When we write something down, we're more likely to actually do it. And if our Lenten practice were like to fall apart halfway through, well, having it written down is a good idea of what we want to go back to. The other thing I want to call to your attention for Lent this year is small groups. Small groups are a great place to help you grow in faith and in life, and I was so happy to hear at Before Mass how small groups have played a role in Jamie's faith life, and really, that's what we want for, for all of you. So if you've been kicking the tires, you know, join a small group just for Lent, and then see where it goes after that. The greatest danger for most of us is not that we aim too high and miss it, but rather that we aim too low and reach it. And one of the things that keeps us from aiming high is, our, is comparison with others. And I'm not talking about the, the heroes who inspire us looking up at them. Rather, I'm talking about looking down at people who don't. I know there was an excuse that once or twice I gave my parents, maybe you gave it to your parents too when you got into trouble. They'd say, why did you do it? Well, we gave into peer pressure. And we said something like, well, everybody else was doing it. And how did your parents respond? Well, they were like mine, they responded, well, everyone else is not my son and daughter, you are. And we hold you to a higher standard. People who love us call us higher. And that's what Jesus does in today's gospel. Today's gospel is taken from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and it's a continuation of the antithesis statements that we heard the first part of 
last week. They're called antithesis statements because Jesus takes a teaching from either the Torah or popular culture and then he expands and extends it. And each of them follows the same formula. Jesus says, you have heard it said, but I say to you. And what Jesus is doing is telling us to aim high in both our conduct and our relations. In the first antithesis we heard, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This comes from the Old Testament idea of equivalent retribution, which maybe you've also heard as a part of Hammurabi's cult code. And the purpose of this was to limit retaliation in proportion to the offense because unchecked revenge quickly spirals out of control. Maybe you've seen this when people are fighting. So Jesus calls us higher. He says, but I say to you, offer no resistance to the one who is evil. Now, this is clear from what Jesus teaches in other places. He's not telling us to always let ourselves be a punching bag But Jesus is telling us that it can be better for us to accept a wrong patiently because in many situations, that's what love requires. And we see this clearly in arguments between family members and friends. You know, we could be right about something, but we could push so hard to win the argument that we end up losing the relationship. And in cases like that, it's so much better to simply accept the injustice. Besides, with time, the other person might even come along. In the second antithesis, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies. To love someone is to want what's best for them. This doesn't mean that we have to be buddy-buddy with the people who hate us, but it does mean we have to want what's best for them. Now, to be clear, sin and error must always be rejected, but that in no way means that we reject the person who is in sin or the person who is in error. Maybe you've heard the saying, love the sinner, hate the sin. In fact, if we really love people, we want to try to help them out of it. Now, this isn't always easy because life is messy and there's so much false teaching floating around society. But to love our enemies is not to leave them in error, but to help them see the truth and beauty of the gospel in a way that they can receive it. The point of all of, us, of, all of this is that for us as Jesus followers is that we can never settle for the minimum. Because love always aims for the maximum. And as children of God, we are called to a higher standard. And that standard is the cross. Not giving a little when it's easy, but loving with everything when it costs everything. Here's an example of why we're called to aim high. Imagine a couple that merely kept the Ten Commandments in their marriage. They might say something like this. Our marriage is wonderful. We don't steal from each other. We don't lie to each other. We don't cheat on each other. And we haven't even killed each other yet. (laughs) Would that make an ideal marriage? (laughs) No, of course not. God does not want spouses to simply avoid hurting one another. He wants them to excel in love. And that means doing more than the minimum. It means aiming high. So this Lent, which spiritual disciplines will you use to help you aim high?